Okay. I'll get now. Oh, there we go. Oh, we got it. Hey, Ray. Can you hear me now? How are you doing? We hear yeah. you. Mm -hmm. Want to give everybody a couple minutes, or you, uh, you want to get going at well, night? What do we got? <clears throat> I think that's Glenn. Why don't we give everybody another minute or two? We do have a number of things we're voting on, uh, and I got a good amount of positive or uh, affirmatives on this invite. So. A little louder, Christian. I'm going to shut my door in. Speak louder, you said? Yes. All right. Yeah, why don't we give it uh, at least until three or three to five after um, looking at the list of should have a number of more people joining. Should we let Mark in? Working on it. <coughs> And Beacock's still working completely remote? Well, from here you can see that Rich is in the office. I'm at home. Um, let's see where Mark is. If he's, Mark's at home. We're, Mark looks uh, like he's at home. <laughs> <laughs> Taking advantage of it. Uh, yeah, we're, so you can go into the office. We have 50% capacity, but it's only, it's only if you want to be in the office. You know, saying, the, saying to someone, some of my, our colleagues who've gone back to the office, you know, three days a week, they're still, even if they want to talk to one of their other people in the office, they end up Zooming them anyway, so. Think, yeah, we're probably going to be like this until at least January. Um, I think, you know, at the, at, starting in the beginning of the year, we may uh, revisit and, you know, have more of a set, you know, people come in, you know, two or three days a week on a, uh, you know, staggered, uh, you know, schedule. So. All right, looking at the list, Ray, I think we're getting, we're getting close to a quorum. Um, certainly I'll do roll call, but uh, we should be close to everyone we're expecting. I'll be back. Okay, I'll be here. Listen to the video. Morning. Christian, you said you were going to do a roll call or? Oh, yeah, I can start. Do you want me to start the roll call now? Sure. <clears throat> All right, I'm just going to go through the towns uh, in alphabetical order. Uh, Ansonia? Here. Beacon Falls? Bethlehem? Here. Bristol? Here. Cheshire? Here. That's Dan, yeah. Uh, Derby? Middlebury? Nagatuck. Here. Nagatuck is here. Yeah, I saw James or uh, Jim. Yeah. <clears throat> uh, Oxford. Plymouth. Plymouth is here. Prospect. Uh, Seymour. Shelton. Southbury. Southbury is here. Thomaston. Thomaston's here. Watertown. Waterbury. Here. Wolka. And Woodbury. Here. I I, yeah, I saw. <clears throat> All right. So, so just to commence with the uh, formal. I, I'll just go through the agenda, Christian. So just to commence with the meeting, a meeting commencement, public comment. Is there anybody here from the public 
wishes to speak. Seeing none, we'll uh, move on to the next item, which is approval of the meeting minutes, the, uh, which were contained within the packet, which was forwarded to all members. Is there a motion to uh, uh, approve? I'll make a motion in Sonia. Is there a second? Second at Thomaston. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Uh, just moving on, transportation planning, the uh, you know update of the tip, Christian. Yeah, I, I just want to give a quick presentation on the transportation improvement program. Oh, sorry, I have a typo on my slide. It's the transportation improvement program, not plan. Um, this is a, a federally doc, uh, required document for all MPOs um, in our region. We are currently part of two MPOs as shown here on the map. We have the Central Naugatuck Valley MPO and the Greater Bridgeport Valley MPO and the towns of, or the towns of uh, Shelton, Seymour and the cities of Ansonia and Derby, or city of Shelton too, are part of that, that lower MPO. So Greater Bridgeport Valley MPO writes one tip and we write a second tip for the Naugatuck Valley MPO and all projects that will receive federal federal funding will be included in that um, in that program of projects. So it's required that we write a new tip at minimum every four years, although we can write them more often. Um, it has a four year planning horizon. So this differs from our long range plan called the Metropolitan Transportation Plan, which we finished last year, which had a 25 year uh, planning horizon. In that document, we really lay out how we want our, um, our, our transportation network to evolve over the coming decades. Um, and, and the transportation improvement program is really how do we start implementing those projects to make them happen. Both, both documents are fiscally constrained, but obviously with a four year planning horizon, we can make much better estimates of the funding that will be available to us. I mean, even now with the Federal Transportation Act uh, set to expire, we still know, have a good idea of what funding is going to be like next year based on um, um, the, uh, their, the, the plans to extend the current bill, uh, or current act. Um, so it's a living document. New projects are often being, uh, are coming into the project. Old projects are, are, are changing years sometimes or being accelerated depending on priorities and funding opportunities. Um, it's a collaborative project process with the uh, Connecticut Department of Transportation, um, including um, it, where, where the, the DOT will give us a list of projects. We provide them with our priorities through the long range plan and the, the capital, um, capital improvement plan. Um, they give us their list. We look at them, make sure they meet our, our goals and we include them. Um, generally, the projects in the TIP at this point are on uh, state assets with, the, with lots of um, local, local transportation, uh, local capital, uh, local transportation capital improvement program. Uh, most of those local roads uh, are getting, are, are receiving funding through that program. And as a result, most of the projects including the TIP are on those state assets. Um, and as I said, it's a financially constrained document. Um, so again, this is all projects receiving, um, scheduled to receive federal funding. If you look at the four, year, um, four years of projects included in this 2021-2024 TIP, um, it'll require 1.1 billion um, to implement the entire program. Now, of that 1.1 billion, about 70, 70 and a half million will come to, or for projects that we think of as purely within the region. Um, 66 of that, about 95% of that is for highway projects and then an additional 5% so minus for operational costs of transit. Um, and that really, it, it, it's a difficult, here, let me just, I'm going to take you to the map here. Um, I want to, I want to, oh, let's go show desktop now work. I want to just show you. Uh, where, sort of where these projects are and try to dig down a little deeper and uh, can justify how that spending lines up. So we have a number of projects that are currently included, included in the TIP uh, in Bristol that may or may not go forward um, at our different levels of planning. 
Um, same with Plymouth, number of big projects along I-84 in Waterbury, uh, the Signal project in Waterbury, the CMAP project. Then we also include, even though our tip is just for the, the blue towns on this map, uh, we also include on our website all the projects that are being included in the Greater Bridgeport Valley um, tip. Now, obviously, that does not add up to um, that does not add up to 1.1 billion. A lot of the bigger projects ultimately end up going into. Um, okay, I can't mind my presentation. Uh, end up going into uh, statewide programs that. Where am I? Okay. Um, there we go. You can all see my screen, I assume. Go into statewide programs. So, for example, in the next four years, we have $200 million scheduled for um, bridges statewide. Now, some of that money will end up in our region, but because, because they're statewide uh, programs, every MPO includes them in their tip. So, you have a number of programs like that the railroad. Um, I remember that is to say the uh, New Haven line receives large chunks of funding um, that all benefit our region but aren't necessarily purely projects uh, contained within our borders. So I just wanted to give a little um, explanation of why those numbers um, seem to diverge at such a level. Uh, <clears throat> the, the, the other major part of the process of what we will be presenting to the board um, next Friday for their approval is the air quality conformity. Um, our region um, falls within two non-attainment areas, the uh, New York, New Jersey, Long Island, Connecticut non-attainment area for ozone, and the greater Connecticut non-attainment area for, for ozone. Um, ozone, uh, may or may not know, is linked to a number of health concerns, uh, especially respiratory, um, and so has been included in the Clean Air Act since um, for, for um, for control. Um, now we're currently classified as um, serious under the under under the 2008 standards for both non-attainment areas, and that that qualification comes mainly out of um, a lack of can, ability to meet the our set standards in both uh, I want to say 2015 and 2018, which bumped it into a higher uh, non-attainment level. Now concurrently, the 2015 standards are in place um, and have not, we haven't reached the same level of sort of maturity under those forms. So even if we are, there are more stringent standards that we will be working with going forward, uh, the state of Connecticut, um, our region or the state of Connecticut is currently classified as moderate under the greater Connecticut non-attainment area and as, I'm oh, sorry, I reverse that, moderate under the New York, New Jersey, Long Island area and marginal under the Greater Connecticut non-attainment area. Um, how does this interact with the TIP? Well, all the projects included in the TIP are modeled for the impacts they will have on, um, on air quality, uh, specifically two, um, two, two, cursor, uh, two, uh, two specific uh, chemicals. You have VOCs um, and, and uh, Vox and Nox, and not in nitrous oxides. Uh, these sort of, these two, these are precursors to ozone. And so these are the chemicals that are monitored. And on these lines, you see the budget that is set, is set forward in the EPA approved uh, state implementation plan. Uh, and then you see the projected emissions in blue. So in both cases, we should be um, set to stay in under budget for these two precursors of uh, ozone. Um, for the for for the um, for the New York, New Jersey, Long Island non-attainment area. Uh, same story in the Greater Connecticut uh, non-attainment area, where uh, our, our emissions continue to decrease, or yeah, emissions of these precursory chemicals continue to decrease while the budget stays flat. The second chemical or the second uh, standard we have to monitor is. Uh, particulate matter 2.5. Um, this is a very small radius uh, particle, uh, roughly the 30th diameter of um, a, strain of air, a strain of air, a piece of air. So very small, gets into your lungs, gets into your bloods, gets into your blood. Um, for PM 2.5, we are only, only, the only not attainment area in Connecticut is that New Jersey, Northern New Jersey, New York, Northern New Jersey, Long Island not attainment area. 
um, and effective October 24th, 2013, the Connecticut portion of this multi-state PM 2.5 non-attainment area was redesignated as attainment maintenance. This means that we have maintained the level below the standard uh, and must continue to maintain that, but um, it is a, a, a lesser level of um, non-attainment. So, um, as I said, all projects are modeled and shown to um, keep us in attainment going forward. So here you see again, we start below the budget and we end below the budget. Um, finally, an important part of the, the transportation improvement program, which has been included um, since to the 2015 transportation bill. Our performance measures are first outlined um, earlier that in the in MAP 21. Um, but carry it forward into the FAST Act. Uh, so there's, uh, these are the basic categories that are monitored. Um, there's highway safety, which uh, we will be presenting, uh, which we, we endorse annually. Then there's some other higher level stuff that we only have to look at every four years. Pavement condition, bridge condition, system reliability. This is a question of um, congestion and the uh, expected time that you or the amount of time it would take you to travel between, say, Waterbury and Hartford on an average day, and if it's reliably the same amount of time, or does it fluctuate greatly? Uh, a similar, similar measure is used for the freight movement. Um, finally, a slightly different measure of air quality than what's included in the um, <clears throat> than what's included in the air quality conformity. And for transit, there's a state of good repair measure. So <clears throat> these are the three major parts of the, the TIP, um, the, the list of projects, the, um, the air quality conformity, and the system performance. Um, I would like to put a motion forward, or if there's interest in putting a motion forward, this is that the TTAC has had a chance to review the TIP. We've mentioned this in past meetings that it would be available. Um, we've distributed the list, and that um, if there are any questions, we've had a chance to answer them today. Um, and just that the TTAC might recommend um, approval to the Greater NDCOC Board as their transportation specialists. Is there a uh, motion to uh, approve from the committee? I'll make a motion, Sheila. Is there a second? Second. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Nagatuck. Uh, uh, discussion? I guess one comment I have is now to amend this as projects come, I guess what is the duration and how do you amend it? Our NDO, that is to say our policy board, um, we, we, have an, we have a memorandum of understanding with the uh, Connecticut Department of Transportation allowing us to amend it. The formal procedure is if, um, let's look at Cost, cost is a good example. So if the cost on a project, say um, the, the intersection of, uh, an inter the intersection project in Bristol, let's say it changes by greater than um, 20%, then that project has to come back to the, the federal portion. If the federal portion changes by greater than 20%, that project has to come back to the MPO, which is our policy board, uh, the, uh, the board of directors um, of 15, which is made up of the chief elected officials of the 15 towns included in the MPO. They have to have an affirmative vote to endorse the project at that new price. Um, if there's a new project, let's say, uh, that wasn't included you know, in, in the fall of 2020, but all of a sudden 2022 is a priority, same procedure. It comes back before the, the MPO, they vote on it, and they have to vote to approve the use of federal funds. It really is the local check um, on the use of federal funds for highway programs. Uh, one of the basis of my question is really, it seems like you know what has happened in the past is that honestly there's a project that's not you know on the list and they uh, all of a sudden there's a potential for either you know direct state funding or potential grant and one of the grant requirements is it be on the tip in which case we then we want it you know the tip changed almost instantaneously can you just talk me through that process if there's a way to expedite such an issue yeah generally, generally we vote, vote on it once a month um, we bring we bring new amendments before the board once a month at the monthly board meeting. 
Um, if it was a priority, I think um, your, your mayor would have no problem uh, convincing her colleagues to come together for an emergency meeting. It might be held virtually or over the phone, even in the times when we are meeting in person. Um, and as long as we give it a 24 hour notice, we can hold that sort of emergency meeting to get a new project on there if there was ever something that was time sensitive. And then how, what's the time duration? What's the time duration of the, I'm sorry, Mark, go ahead. No, I was just gonna add, um, in, in the way the process does work, um, federal regulations require that the state tip and our metropolitan tip have to be in agreement at all times. So generally a project doesn't ought to, uh, just pop up, you know, with, you know, without any, any notice. And it's usually have gone, has gone through, you know, a lot of study, design and vetting. So um, usually the department, you know, knows that, you know, we need to amend the tip to add a priority project. The region knows we have to add it. So we usually have some lead time to get it on uh, before our board for endorsement. And it, it is, it, it can be pretty quick. It, as Christian mentioned, the tip is a uh, dynamic document. You know, we do this comprehensive update, uh, you know, every you know, three to four years, but it basically is good for, for the time that it's actually been adopted. Uh, almost, you know, within, within a, several weeks of endorsing, uh, we'll have projects uh, that need to be amended and you know, either schedules have changed, costs has changed, or uh, we have to add more, uh, a, a new project came up all of a sudden, we have to, to provide the money. So uh, it, it's a pretty quick process, but it is something that is done collaboratively, yeah, collaboratively with the department. And then how long is the, uh, what's the time frame on it? For the, our, the, the current trip we're looking at? Yeah. Yeah, it's four years. 2021, 2024 is the current, the current time frame. Right. And, uh, but, you know, the, it, and again, throughout that four year time period, um, the, the projects are constantly being amended, uh, new projects are being added, uh, you know, schedules are being adjusted, cost estimates are being changed. In a very, very rare case, a project block should be deleted from the tip. Uh, you know, if it's uh, uh, you know, it, it, it's a project that has you know was put on the tip, and then all of a sudden, for some reason, it could be environmental, it could be cost, it could just be you know public uh, uh, sentiment that doesn't want it anymore. You know, a project is removed from the tip. So those actions can be taken at almost any time within that four-year time frame. So those are just some of the you know, questions that I had. I don't know if any other committee members had any other questions. There's Jackie Carr from Southbury. Um, have they, has the uh, elected official board, have they ever actually denied one, uh, any of the increases? I, yes. I these projects have come through and then at one budgeted price and then almost doubles or something like that. Uh, has the board actually, once it changed, denied the, that project? They, they, they do. Uh, and again, it depends on the whether the project is, you know, let's say controversial or uh, has some, you know, has generated some, uh, you know, comment on it. Uh, but uh, it, it's usually not that they will deny an amendment, what they will do is ask for a lot of clarification. Um, okay, all of a sudden this project was listed at, you know, $2 million, now it's $20 million, you know, what, you know, what caused that increase? You know, we just, we, we don't want to just be a rubber stamp, you know, we want to be able to understand what factors went into, you know, that cost increase. Um, I, and I mean, one example that we do have where the MPL has really voiced some, um, reluctance to approve a project is this, the, the uh, Stevenson Dam bridge between uh, over the, you know, the Stevenson Dam between uh, Oxford and Monroe. Um, you know, the state just wanted us to put it on the tip and we have uh, our region especially has some concerns about that project and not that we don't think it is necessary or it may not be in, 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 it's, that it's in the long-term interest of the region to have it built. We just want to get some information um, and we want to know, what, you know what's driving the cost. You know, 
you know, what alignments are they looking at? Uh, so um, we, we try to get the, our, our, our board, you know, more actively involved in projects. And that has been a, <laughs> a difficult uh, situation because we, because uh, a lot of times our, our, our board members, you know, view this, our state projects and they, they're, you know, they just sort of accept them. It's all oh, the state knows what they're doing. They're, they're, they're working on this project and we should go ahead and support it. Um, and that that's all well and good. You know, again, we just want to make sure they have good information on what that project is. You know, we, we want to be, um, you know, keep keep the uh, shall I say keep the department honest and, and, and keeping us informed on on what projects are being included and what the costs are. I'm not sure if that answered your question, John. <laughs> it was too uh, long winded or not. Yeah, I understand that they wanted to know details when why something increased a lot, but I was just kind of curious if they, if they've ever shut down a project saying no, that more than doubled, so now we're not going to do it or something like that. Yeah, and and, and typically no, um, usually because the project has gone through so much. Well, you, you you know, John, you know how long it takes a project to, to yep. get get you know from the time we think about doing it, from the time it gets initiated to design. Um, you know, it takes anywhere to, you know, five years, eight years to actually get it constructed. So, I mean, it's, it's usually if a project is going to uh, not be supported, we usually find out about that, you know, well in advance of, of you know, when it's getting ready to be constructed. And yeah, I, I, and again, I, I agree. Um, it, it's always that concern, you know, what happens if the costs all of a sudden skyrocket? The department has they they try their their due diligence to make sure that doesn't happen. You know that you know they understand the cost well in advance of of getting it out to construction. So uh, usually we can avoid that 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 scenario. And the only thing I would add to that, and this is something I didn't touch in my present touch on in my presentation, <clears throat> is that funding is generally um, can be broken up three way: federal, state, local. But generally, it's 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 federal and state. Um, the only projects, the other you, to, to go directly at your question, John, projects where you have that local match and are tied by a percentage, um, I, I can think of some examples where they've also um, been discontinued because that local match was getting un, un, untenable. Um, so it also depends on the nature of the project, I'd say. Thank you. Uh, any other questions from uh, committee members? If not, there's been a motion to approve and it's been seconded. All in favor? Aye. 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 Uh, uh, motion passes. Uh, going on to the next you know, item is a, 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 a regional safety plan. Yeah, I just want to give some quick updates running right down the list. Uh, the regional safety plans, we've tried to been, uh, keep you all informed of this uh, ongoing project. It's being um, overseen. It's a, it's a state project, but it's being done at the regional level as the full NBCOG geography. Uh, it's, it's a safety plan that's being uh, put together by VN engineers. Um, they're doing their final review, so if you have any comments on the recommendations they might be making in your um, this is really get to that, that last chance to uh, have your voice heard. Um, obviously, we'll keep advocating for stuff going forward, but um, once something ends up in a report, it obviously has more weight. Um, <clears throat> um, what was I going to say? Right, there are, there are funding consequences to this and that. Um, we, we, it has been indicated that going forward, the local road accident reduction program um, may be using these plans to, um, to pull projects from. So uh, if there's something you want to see in there or something that maybe has been changed and as you want to make a comment on, please go do that. Uh, the second thing is the active living, active transportation, um, not plan, this is a active transportation committee and grant program. Um, this, I brought, I've discussed this grant with this committee in the past. It's small grants to promote uh, walking and pedestrian uh, movement, uh, hence the active living act of active transportation. It is being funded ultimately through the CDC um, and being uh, admitted, uh, managed by 
the capital region co council of governments uh, with the other uh, councils of governments serving on the advisory committee. Uh, we're going into, they're going, they, they've secured their third year of funding with uh, a likelihood of a fourth and fifth, fifth year available. Um, this year, well, they'll continue to take um, applications or interest in some, some facilities like bump outs or um, uh, decorative crossings, low cost, in between five and $20,000 at the most. Um, low cost, uh, quick improvements that can be done to what they call tactical urbanism. Um, that will continue, but going this year, they're putting a, they're starting a new program, which is called Train the Trainer. And the idea is to get into, to find a partner with schools, maybe a physical education teacher, train that physical education teacher how to train their students on, um, um, on using a bicycle amongst traffic. So on biking in a, in, in, in a, in a road environment safely. So the idea is train the trainer, um, leverage their funding to spread, spread the word on how to do this safely and hopefully encourage uh, more people to use bikes. Um, Christian, is there any information on this program? Because, you know, I had thought I had a project, um, but turned out it wasn't, I guess, what you guys were looking for. So is there anything like, you know, any, let's keep talking, uh, Sheila. I think there's still possibility for your project. It's just because okay. it's so narrow in funding, we have to have, it's, it's really all about having a clear scope that's narrow enough that okay. uh, we can we can work with the consultants to i think we were looking at decorative bump outs in in the case of ansonia i think that's still an option we just need to circle back and, and yeah okay great because uh, we've got the residential units going in so i just want to you know see if i can do mm -hmm. something to enhance that area but absolutely i think that's what it was in your case we were looking at there's going to be extensive um, truck movement through that area so we wanted to come in after because it is it, generally the painting is, is to try a new idea out, um, okay. something that and the paint often doesn't last more than a season um, okay. or two. So it, okay. you want to make sure things are ready to go. But yeah, that's that does seem like a good project, and I did discuss it with the thanks. consultants, and it seemed to fall within the scope. Okay, um, thanks, Christian. In in Waterbury, the Mattatuck Museum is working with the the, the consultants to try to find a project um, around the around the green to improve safety and visibility of pedestrians there, especially on the northern side, closer to the YMCA and the Magic Museum. Looks like that may, um, may, may go forward in the spring. Uh, this year, there's too much other things going on to get that to go forward. Um, so, no. no, we don't sell it. Can you tell me yeah. off the top of your head why I'm not getting voice or any of that in this meeting? Um, uh, Ray, we hear you. Uh, Roy, sorry, Roy, we hear you. Maybe he has, he's uh, muted. Or, yeah, your phone's plugged in. Um, but, so two things I want to say. One is that this year they're doing that train the trainer. And the other thing is they have bike, uh, they're, they're looking to um, give out bike racks, You're essentially. Just dial in my phone. About 10 bike racks they'll be giving out across the state. So if those things are on your list of things to do, I'll also be letting the, uh, the CEOs know about this because you know some of these projects really need to go through the, the school board or um, um, other routes. But this is this is out there in the availability. Um, final final point in transportation is is lot sip. Um, a couple things here, but Karen and I can talk to this a little bit. I just wanted to give you an update on our uh, on one of our projects in our program. Beacon Falls formerly had a project to reconstruct the bridge on Beacon Valley Road that has um, morphed into a road reconstruction project still on, on, on Beacon Valley Road, um, just a little further along. And I'll let Karen just share what she's learned about the uh, SHPO review form. Yeah, that's just something that came up recently and thought it was worth mentioning. Um, typically on all the lots of projects, the DOT will um, at some point give us their environmental screening document and in there they always require that uh, the municipality um, uh, send in the SHPO project review form. Um, and I, I guess 
in the past that's always been via hard copy for whatever reason Shippo wanted it hard copy um, but recently we inquired again to make sure that was still the case and it turns out that you know due to COVID and everything and people working from home the the um, Shippo people also asked they still want it hard copy but they also asked to um, send it you know via email so now uh, I just wanted to alert everybody. So when you when you get time when it comes time to send in that shipo form on a project, I can you know go over that again with you. But just basically, they're just asking for the two forms of um, you know sending it in, the two different ways of sending it in, just to make sure that they get it. And it looks like I just jumped over something. Um, I think most of you are aware the Community Connectivity Program is uh, taking a third round, a third solicitation. Um, it's primarily for communities who do not, who have, all, who, who, if they received an earlier grant, have advanced to the construction phase. Um, although I understand uh, several communities are working with uh, DOT to move projects, even um, though they may not have completed a previous one. Uh, before I move on, any, any questions about the items mentioned on this slide? All right, hearing none. So we do have a new lots of project as well. Uh, or no, sorry, not a new uh, cost increase. Um, this is uh, Beach Road in Wolka. It, it came in as, as, the, as part of the initial solicitation with many of our other projects. It's Wolka's second project. Um, they're, they've advanced through about semi-final design, if I'm not mistaken, Karen. Um, and as they finalized uh, quantities and completed those designs, price has gone up 50% from its last approved cost. Um, and we will be bringing this before the board as well next, um, next Friday for their review. Um, but again, we want to give this committee a chance to review it first. Do you have anything more to add, Karen? Or that was a little... No, this just this latest estimate is considered the semi-final um, submission. So just to let you know. I, I guess my question would be with such a, you know, you know percentage-wise, such a high increase, is that an increase in scope or is it just the timing of the various uh, uh, estimates? I, I think it's a variety of those things. It, it is, um, the scope did increase slightly and, you know, this kind of goes back to what was discussed pre at a uh, previous DTEC meeting that, um, you know, we're, we're really taking a hard look at these projects to make sure that the, the geometrics um, can be improved to the extent possible, um, you know, and things like that. So Beach Road, did, they did go back a little bit to the drawing board and and tried to make some additional improvements that were recommended by, by me, um, and you know, and MV Cog. So that was part of it. And and then you know the other, um, the other you know typical kind of things that you know it's 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 um, a, a few years old I think since the first estimate came through. Um, I don't know, Christian, you had a couple different um, things listed as as to why the estimate increased. So what, yeah, so what's, in, what's included in, it, in there is much of what we've been seeing a lot on these earlier projects that we first, um, that came through in that first solicitation, um, what we'll call pre-Karen. Uh, with our applications as they come in as pre-applications, even before they get to the DOT application, they're getting a much more closer, closer look. And so we're hoping going forward we see less of these cost increases um, at semi-final. Um, and that we're, we're, we're going in with better estimates. So it's a lot of the same reasons, which is essentially finalizing quantities, uh, slight changes to geometry. It's not right away, there's no, there's no right, big right away costs on this project. Um, it's basically just uh, more complete plans. Now, you know, what we have experienced, you know, in Bristol, when we go for, you know, projects that interact, you know, with the DOT, you know, their cost estimates, you know, we use their cost estimating tools and their unit cost. I, uh, and that's really a requirement from DOT, but we do find that that's very inflated based on the local numbers that we ultimately end up getting. The, where, where do you come up with the unit costs that are used to calculate this just 
the town's data or are you using the DOT's data? I can jump in on that. That's generally the, the engineer, the design firm that's doing the design for the project uses costs from their database. And um, I do kind of go through that and, it, and try to pick out anything that seems like it might be way off as far as unit pricing. And I, I have um, all of the projects, the so lots of projects, I have a, a database with all the um, the bid, the actual bid um, prices. So when I think something looks out of whack, I, I kind of refer back to some recent projects to see what the numbers have been coming in at. So um, I personally don't use the DOT's unit prices, um, you know, unless there's a, an item there that I we just don't have a cost for. But um, I the, the ones that when they come in with the, the plans, it's however the design firm you know whatever prices they have in their database so some of them may be using dot and some of them may be using their own i really don't know the da data that you have for losa a lot of from all the other all the projects we've done in the region maybe you do now i just never looked at it but can you make those available in an organized manner on the website with bid tabs so we can use it as a resource I don't do and uh, just are you talking about the applications, Ray? No, the actual like you know, like cost bids. unit pricing. Yeah. Yes. Right. You know, so just like a bid tab for every you know every project. So. Yep. Quite frankly, I would use it as a resource to do our own. You know, at least look at it with respect to our own cost estimate, and yeah, then that's they, a good uh, idea. on this project, who who is Wolcott using as a consultant? Um, it's um, HRP Associates, I believe. Okay. So those are the only questions I had. I, I don't know if any committee members had any other questions or comments. Yeah, this is John Cattell. Is, is this just a road reclamation or did I hear that it was also a bridge that turned into a road or? So, sorry, John. That was uh, that was the Beacon Valley or Beacon Falls project that went from a bridge to a road project. And this project is called the Reclamation because that's how we entered it in 2015. But it really is more of a reconstruction, if I'm not mistaken, Karen. Well, I the, they are going to do some rec reclamation of the pavements, but you know, then they'll be adding adding to that. So, I mean, it's. It's still a reconstruction, but the process will be reclamation. And this just is a road. This doesn't include a, a culvert or a bridge or anything. Does this include sidewalks and uh, other traffic improvements also, or is it just straight, rec you know, like I say, reconstruction reclamation? Because as Ray was saying, I'd be kind of interested if that was the case, then, um, you know, how many square yards to get an idea of what's this square yard cost? Uh, for future knowledge. Yeah, um, I think uh, for the most part, it's it's mostly just roadway reconstruction with drainage. Um, I don't believe there were any there were any signals um, involved in this project. Um, and I, you know, I don't off the top of my head, I don't know the length of the project. But it, you know it's pretty long, so I, yeah. I have you know we could follow up and give you the length of the project and, and like the square footage of roadway if that would be helpful with the price. Well, I, I'd probably just follow up with Ray's uh, request where if we can get some type of unit pricing on it, then that would kind of tell us. Okay. Any other questions or comments from committee members? Uh, once again, you're looking for a motion. So is there a motion to a, uh, uh, approve the revised cost estimate? And recommend approval to a, uh, the MVCOG board? I'll make that motion. Cheshire will second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Um, moving on to the next item, emergency management update. Oh, 
Hello, can you guys hear me? Yes. Okay, great, thank you. Uh, and thank you for your time this morning. Um, so there's two items that I wanna talk about today. Um, this, this applies to the regional emergency planning team for region five, which is uh, the 43 municipalities. Um, we have started, well, not so much myself, but um, Paul Gibb, Anthony Iadarola, um, they're starting to do a maintenance um, slash equipment uh, inventory and trying to figure out what equipment um, is going past or about near its service life. Uh, this comes out of uh, every time that we get a maintenance request, we're not sure, you know, okay, you want to replace a motherboard. Well, what's the actual, you know, you replace the motherboard, what's the life of the actual rest of the physical equipment? Um, so that's beginning and that's beginning with the, the variable message boards. And I know that uh, Paul Gibbs sent out an email to uh, a bunch of the Department of Public Works people. Maybe some of you are familiar or remember that email. Um, and they're starting with the, um, trying to figure out the ADCO message boards and who has what and how old that equipment is. And the tentative plan is that they're going to, um, uh, they, they'd like to have that ADCO distributor in Av Avon, Massachusetts um, to come to Connecticut, ex inspect those units and, you know, get, give their opinion on which ones are nearing their at the end of their service life. So I just wanted to let you guys know that's in the works. Um, and if you do get an email from Paul Gibb, please try to respond as best you can. Um, the other information I want to give you is that um, this is actually a little bit old information, but there has been a um, motion that was uh, submitted to Pura by Ridgefield and three other towns um, asking for immediate and emergency relief um, regarding the Make Safe program and the, um, the liaison program. Uh, so this was, it's going to be applied to all electrical um, uh, delivery companies, um, but it was really in response to Eversource and UI and their response during Tropical Storm ESA ES. Um, so what happened was in, in the last week, uh, Pura did have a right, uh, did do a ruling and what they did was they, they pretty much supported uh, the motion, um, not so much to have the make safe crews meet with the towns before the actual weather event, but they're not gonna tolerate any other deviation from the emergency response plans in the future, future events. Um, the other part of this is that um, the reporting systems need to be uh, followed as per the emergency response plans and that the community liaison program um, be administered as per the emergency response plans. There was a lot of um, uh, variable uh, experience with the, the community liaisons. Um, so they want to make sure that those, those are all um, followed to a T. The other thing that you guys should know is that Pura directed the um, electric uh, delivery companies to hold a meeting with each town with the, uh, the liaison, the company liaison, and at least one member of the operations personnel. And these meetings need to take place before October 16th. So I've sent um, an email to the emergency management directors and the CEOs of the region five town, but this really applies to all across the state, not just region five, but all towns in Connecticut, cities and towns in Connecticut. So I just wanted you to be aware of those two. These are really big um, issues in my opinion. And I'm, uh, that's the end of my summary for today. Um, I'm open to questions if you have them. So I, uh, from Bristol's perspective and you know I don't honestly I can talk for quite a while on this but I won't I uh, it was upsetting in the storm I'm sure you know Bristol's experience was common you know to everybody's uh, leading up you know to, you know in, in, for the last you know several years every time that we had training opportunities with uh, you know Eversource it was always uh, make safe program make safe program make safe program and then during that storm it wasn't even like uh, gee you know we're or having problems with the Make Safe program, or we can't support it. They didn't even acknowledge the Make Safe program existed, you know, which was uh, you know shocking, you know, to me. So, uh, you know, that's I guess that's my only comment. I, I don't know if there's any other comments from anybody on the uh, on the committee that has any questions or comments. Uh, if there, if there's not, I guess.
Just one more item, just an emergency management you know, issue. And once again, I don't know if you know, Bristol's comments or concerns are typical of other communities, but during that storm, uh, so since that storm, we submitted you know, documentation to, you know, to the state a, uh, and now you know, to FEMA to find out, and there, in my understanding, they're still working on the formal uh, declaration to uh, the feedback we're getting is, is that the state and Hartford County, what Bristol is part of, has met the threshold, but I guess we haven't had that, you know, confirmed. And then, uh, you know, my second, you know, question is a, uh, you know, certainly we have received, you know, here in Bristol, uh, you know, I've sent people and gone myself to various, you know, a, uh, you know, training with FEMA regarding debris management, but, the, I guess some of the detailed nuances I'm still unclear on because a, uh, you know, what exact forms, you know, you know, you know, do they need almost to like immediately during the, uh, uh, you know, the storm event and then following the storm event with, you know, with time sheets and, you know, and data. I, I would love to get some training almost on a, uh, almost like on a tactical level, how to, you know, make sure that as the storm is progressing, you generate you know, the required documentation that ultimately FEMA seems to be looking for. And, uh, you know, I, I don't know if you have any comments or I, uh, can direct me to any resources, you know, Joanne. Uh, and, and you're asking me, Ray? I just want to make clear. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So I know that uh, this, this is uh, my experience with Region 5 and John Field, the regional coordinator there. Um, he was always telling, um, and I was on multiple of these uh, calls with emergency management directors, is that keep every documentation that you can because you never know what FEMA will approve or will not approve. So even if you think they might not, try to keep some record of, you know, mask, what you had to buy masks or a certain supply of PPE, um, you know, overtime, things like that. They, they say just make records of everything. And in the case of Tropical Storm Isaias, also um, uh, documentation of, uh, you know, visual documentation of trees across roads and, and you know, things on, and on, on the lines and things like that. Uh, that was very important. Um, and I know that um, last week there was the governor's municipal conference call, Brenda Bergeron, who's the counsel for Demis and, um, you know, with, uh, she's been talking with FEMA regarding the um, compensation and for the, the uh, public, uh, the public funding, that, that the public assistance funding that uh, should be available th for that. Uh, I'm thinking um, Tropical Storm Isaias, but also with uh, the coronavirus. Um, so they are, I, I know that regarding Tropical Storm Isaias, they, she said that there are six counties that do qualify, that, that have made the threshold for FEMA uh, funding, and that this week, they were going to actually submit a declaration, of, of, you know, a disaster declaration regarding Tropical Storm Isaias. I have not heard anything uh, more updated th about that, but I can definitely relay your um, information for training request. Um, and, you know, I'll, I'll send it to uh, a John Field, because I know that he, um, he was in, in really good contact with, you know, the, the FEMA, um, at Demis, the, the FEMA grant uh, liaisons uh, for that. So I'll pass on and I, I'll try to get back to you with as much information as I can. Thank you. Uh, any other committee members have any uh, questions or comments? This is John Cattell, uh, Salisbury. So is it my correct in my understanding that Several of these counties have reached the thresholds. The state overall has reached the thresholds, but it has not been formally sent for the presidential approval. And that's what we're waiting on. That's my understanding, yes. And that's, as, that's current as of uh, last week when I heard Brenda Bergeron speak during the governor's municipal conference call. Okay, thank you. It's Dave Simpson from Waterbury. Um, I heard the same from my FEMA contact who is working remotely out of Washington, D.C., of course. New Haven County did meet the threshold, as did um, the state of Connecticut. 
and they expect a major declaration to be issued in the short term. Great, thank you very much. I appreciate you updating that. Any other comments or questions? If not, item number four, regional hazard mitigation plan update. Hey, Ray. Mm -hmm. uh, sorry, I didn't push the buttons in time. Uh, no. I'll get back to Joey. And did Ridgefield reach the uh, threshold? Sorry, guys. Yeah, Litchfield County did reach the threshold. Thank you. Okay, uh, Regional Hazardous Mitigation Plan, Aaron. Good morning, thank you. Um, so NBCOG was awarded a FEMA grant last year to conduct a multi-jurisdictional uh, natural hazard mitigation plan for all 19 of our member municipalities. Uh, the purpose is to fulfill the federal requirement for municipalities at, at minimal cost and to get all 19 municipalities in the same renewal schedule for their hazard mitigation plans. Um, developing a regional plan will also allow us to develop regional priorities and recommendations that can be incorporated into our plans and programs. Mona McBroom is the project consultant and this past week they started conducting coordination meetings in individual towns. Some of you have been, been part of those meetings. Um, they include public works, police, fire, planning, emergency management, and other relevant local officials um, and detail natural disasters like, like Isaiah's and other local developments since previous plans were completed. Um, coordination meetings are going to continue through October and we tentatively set um, uh, dates for a, uh, a, a workshop with local coordinators and the public on November 18th. Um, details are on our project webpage, uh, which is going to be continually updated, um, and that's on the NVCOG website. So if you have any questions, you can let me know. Um, if you haven't been in contact with um, your local coordinator or with uh, Malone and McBroom, um, they will be reaching out soon. So um, stay tuned. John Cattell again. Uh, who's the uh, lead person from Malone McGroom that's handling this? So uh, Dave Murphy is the project manager, but Scott uh, Bignati is doing all of the local meetings um, and, and all the local outreach. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Any other uh, questions or comments from the committee members? Okay, uh, just moving on, shared municipal services update. Uh, John? I don't see John in the meeting. I don't see him here, maybe he didn't make it. Uh, I think he just intended to give an update on um, the most recent ha uh, hazard waste, uh, municipal, what is it? Hazard waste pickup. I think it was in, in Ansonia. I don't know if there's any news from the committee. Okay, this is Larry again. Can you hear me? Yes. Yeah, we had about 619 cars, which was quite a bit uh, less than we experienced at the previous one in Waterbury. We did extend the hours for it. We started half an hour earlier and ended an hour later. Uh, aside from that, there were no issues or problems I'm aware of. Thank you, Roy. Okay, thank you. Oh, uh, last thing. Uh, John did anticipate we were going to have a uh, coordination meeting in sometime in November for the upcoming program for 2021. Over. Out. <laughs> Thanks, Roy. Uh, just moving on, the uh, next item is just a general item, really like a roundtable, you know, discussion on what's uh, working, you know, you know, you know what's not. Uh, I guess my only comment on that, just from a, you know, certainly from the regional planning perspective, uh, certainly seems like, you know, obviously it's a hot real estate market, even though if it's the middle of a pandemic, I, uh, you always hear a lot that's contributed to an influx of uh, uh, New Yorkers into Connecticut. I just, uh, uh, 
uh, honestly, I don't know if you know regional planning has seen any real you know data to substantiate you know that, or if if I guess if you really do, I'd be you know interested in just having it forwarded you know to myself and maybe you know you know the committee members just from a regional planning perspective. Christian, not to put you on the spot, but or Mark, if you have any comments or have you seen any real data? I have not seen um, countywide data, but I'm sure. We can poke around. I, I would be surprised if uh, uh, sort of uh, Zillow does a lot of uh, data gathering. They might have some county county information. Joanna actually might be aware too through her work with uh, land use. Um, yeah. Hello. Can you guys hear me? Yeah. Yeah. So I have seen some uh, reports. Uh, uh, there's this uh, real estate uh, reporter out of Massachusetts, I can't remember. I can't off the top of my memory. I just do remember that single family home sales are up. Um, whether, you know, where that's coming from, I think that, and I've heard, you know, I've seen it rather, you know, reports in the news um, that that is actually a, a real phenomenon that a lot of New York City people are moving up to Connecticut and that the market, the real estate market has, is much better now, a lot more sales than there were few months ago. So, um, I, but I can do a little bit more research and uh, report back to you guys. Thank you. I don't know if uh, any other committee members had any comments or questions or. I just, if anyone has, a, has seen a speaker they think that would be relevant to this group, let me know. We have some lined up from the T2 Center uh, for next meeting. Um, this is their uh, safety circuit rider. I'm, for, I'm blanking on her name right now, um, but uh, she's on the agenda. I put it in there. Um, I heard her speak at the MetroCog uh, TTAC meeting uh, a week ago, week and a half ago, and I think she's got some useful information to share with the group. But if anyone else hears about anything else they think should be shared, let me know. So if there are no uh, comments or a, uh, you know, questions. Ray, this is Lenny up in Bethlehem. Just a, a quick comment on the, on the New Yorkers coming in. I think a quick way to, to check that is to check your the school superintendent, see how many kids they got in. Because mm -hmm. in Region 14, we're a small region, but I think we got 40 more kids this year than we had last year. Hmm. Our school population had been going down, so. Yeah, that is a good point. Pretty good indicator. Thanks. Any other comments or questions or a, a motion to adjourn? I'll make a motion. Uh, motion seconding. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Meeting adjourned. Thanks for everybody. Thanks everybody and uh, 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 everybody stay safe and healthy. Thanks Ray. Thank you. Take care. Thank you, everybody. <clears throat>